Welcome to the training series for volunteers in disaster shelters. We would like to demonstrate some basic skills that will assist you in providing individuals with functional needs support. These techniques are designed to keep both you and the individual safe as you provide individuals with the assistance they need to perform their daily tasks while in the general population shelter. This video is on how to use an assistive device. There may be individuals at the shelter who previously used an assistive device but left their homes without it during the disaster. Some individuals may exhibit unsteadiness with standing and walking, indicating that they may benefit from an assistive device. If you notice that an individual looks unsafe or is reaching for walls, furniture, or other people while walking, you should refer this person for a medical evaluation. Keep in mind that various assistive devices offer different levels of support. It is important to provide the individual with the type of assistive device that they normally use. A walker is sturdy and offers a large amount of support for someone who needs a fair amount of assistance. To estimate how high to initially set the walker, it is helpful to ask the individual for their height. Before standing up, fasten a gate belt around the individual for safety. Assist the individual to the standing position and place the walker at a comfortable distance in front of them as if they were about to use it. To assess proper height of the walker, instruct the individual to stand up straight and drop their hands to their sides. Make sure the individual relaxes their shoulders. With any assistive device, the level of the handle should fall at the level of the individual's wrist crease. If the height needs to be adjusted, have the individual sit back down. Push in the pin on each leg of the walker to lengthen or shorten as necessary. When you are finished fitting the walker, ensure that it feels comfortable. When using a walker, make sure that it is held at a comfortable distance in front. Adequate room should be left to step forward, but not so much room that they have to lean over to reach the handles. If the individual has a weaker side, First inquire about how much weight they are able to bear through their affected limb. Instruct them to always keep the weaker side inside of the walker by advancing the walker and then the weaker side. A cane is a common assistive device used to increase balance. It offers less support than a walker, but is lighter, easier to transport, and allows one hand to be free while using it. Fitting a cane is much like fitting a walker. Make sure that the individual is standing up straight with their shoulders relaxed. Ask the individual which hand they normally hold the cane in. With their hand at their side, the individual's wrist crease should fall at the level of the handle. As with the walker, the height can be adjusted using the push pins on the leg. Once the cane is fitted, the individual is ready to maneuver the shelter. Crutches are another common form of assistive device that are useful when an individual is unable to bear full weight on one leg. They require a fair amount of upper body strength and mobility, as well as coordination and balance. First adjust the height of the crutches using the pin on the leg of each crutch. It is helpful to ask the individual for their height. Before standing up, fasten a gate belt around the individual for safety. The top should rest comfortably under the individual's arm, and you should be able to slide two finger widths between the underarm and the top of the crutch. The level of the handle should fall at the level of the individual's wrist crease. If necessary, adjust the height of the handles to the correct wrist position. Make sure that both crutches are set to the same height.
When using crutches, instruct the individual to avoid resting on the arm pads, as this may irritate the skin and nerves. The individual should place only as much weight through the affected leg as they are able to tolerate. It is safest for the individual to begin by using a step two pattern in close quarters, meaning that the individual advances the lower extremities only to the point of the crutches. However, if the individual feels comfortable using the crutches and there is adequate space available, they may choose to use the step through pattern, meaning that the lower extremities are advanced past the point of the crutches. Thank you for joining us. We hope that you find these techniques helpful as you provide functional needs support services and the general population shelters.